how to be stronger without actually getting stronger? Well, I won't leave you with a cliffhanger. Simple answer is biomechanics, which is why I love it. If you will come with me into my garage, which I have just tidied out, <laughs> let's have a little discussion. In very simple terms, let's just talk about strength and then we'll explain how we can do that. If you think about strength, one way of measuring it is how much weight you can move. Who can move the most weight is the strongest person. But of course, it's not as black and white as that. If you go on like a Smith machine, a leg press, right? Let's take it down to that simplest thing. You push with your legs, glutes, whatever muscles will engage. Whoever can push the most is the strongest, has the strongest muscles, right? That's pretty simple. I consider that 1D. You've got one plane of motion. All you have to do is push and there's no directional forces really involved other than that one direction going backwards. Now, how about we level that up a bit? So we look at something like a clean or a squat, which is a bilateral motion, right? Two, both sides of the body doing the exact same thing. Now there's a bit of front and back action going on here. There's a bit of, a bit more extension and flexion can get involved, but still very limited range of motion. But what changes here, when we get to something like a squat or especially a clean, compared to the Smith press or the leg press, is technique starts to become involved. So it's not just about who has the strongest muscles or the strongest legs, it's who has the strongest with the best technique. Or someone could be stronger, but have worse technique. So they're therefore, when moving that weight around, they are not as strong. So there's two paths to being stronger or to moving more weight, and that is to be stronger, and that's what most people do, hypertrophy the muscle, fatigue the muscle, tear the fibers, let them grow back stronger, and that is the main route people take. The other approach is, well, you remove inefficiencies from the ability to use that muscle, so you become more efficient with the muscle you have. Now, in most strength training, strength competitions, powerlifting, it's all bilateral. Technique is important, and it is there is a, a massive skill to it, I would never deny that, but it's still a very 2D bilateral skill. So now, if we look at a unilateral lift or a unilateral clean, what I see most people do, and it's natural because the, the only examples they've really got, unless you dig really deep, is shoulders square, hips level, this very bilateral approach. So when it comes to picking up a kettlebell, which is mostly one-handed, obviously you can do two-handed as well, people tend to just keep the shoulders square. This starts to, is very common in what we do. However, if you want to lift more weight, now we're on a unilateral plane, we're on a 3D plane, we're no longer operating in this fixed, there's a weight here and a weight here, so I should stay even and level. We open up a whole new dimension. We've got, well, I think it's two new dimensions. The shoulders can seesaw. Not only can the shoulders seesaw, but we can rotate the ribs as well. That's two new actions we can bring into play when we move from a bilateral action like a two-handed normal clean with a barbell to something like a kettlebell. And that's where, for me, David Weck's teachings, his principles come into their own, but it's still early days, most people don't understand it yet. But I bet if you're watching me, you've got an intrigue in something like David Weck, and it's my job <laughs> to do my best to try to translate his work and explain it in more simple terms that people can understand. Then, it, you, know, then you get more inspired to play with this stuff. This stuff can make you stronger, feel stronger, appear stronger, be stronger, without actually having to get stronger, as I'm about to explain to you. Now, how could I assist getting the kettlebell up to this rack position, now that I'm unilateral and I've got one side free and I've got rotation free, what can I do? Well, for starters, I could lift one shoulder and coil on the empty side, so that now I'm starting, I'm using the core here to start with an advantage. If I'm level, that bell's a few inches lower. If I coil here, well, I've gained a few inches. And the point of the clean is to get whatever weight I'm lifting to the racked position. So if you look at that, I've gained a few inches from seesawing my shoulders. I'm already here. I can accelerate up. I'm locked into my core here and then drop below it. It's a much more effortless motion. Just a little Barely even need to use my legs. Just shoulders, using the coil and the seesaw of the shoulders. If my shoulders are here, Joe Rogan style rack. Which one do you want? Or 
basic physics, very basic physics. If you want to train efficiency and at the top end of your strength, have more strength, be able to unlock a bigger lift, lift a heavier kettlebell, whatever it is that you want to achieve, using intelligent application of biomechanics of the body, this seesaw, we've, got, we've gone unilateral. We've unlocked these whole extra dimensions of movement that we can tune into. So that was one, that was the seesaw. What else did I mention we can do? We've got rotation. So rather than the bell being square like that, we can turn the bell in, thumb comes in. Now this, most kettlebell swingers know, thumb in as we come back, right? It's a natural thing. We want to rotate the forearm, the muscles wrap around like ropes. We want to take slack out of the system, create tension throughout the whole of the forearm, whole of the tricep, which again wraps around. You create that tension, that's a loaded spring. It's not just muscle, it's a loaded spring, fascia, connective tissue, ligaments, tendons. We're loading it without slack. Horizontal rotation aids vertical movement. So this, I call this the corkscrew. Right, this is the corkscrew action. Corkscrew in. Now it's hard for me to not want to do the shoulders as well. But we can corkscrew in. So those are two actions we can add when we go unilateral with our lifting that involve the core. Now, what's the magic of this? There is a theory that locomotion, human locomotion, the gait cycle, stems first from the core, more proximal at the core, to the distal, to the limbs. Now, the mainstream consensus, which is a theory, is that movement walking comes from the arms and the legs. Our ribs and our shoulders are like robots, and we walk like this. But of course, there are videos of people with no arms and no legs that are still able to walk because they have core dexterity. They have control over the core. They have control over the shoulders and the hips. They can understand where they are in space and they can use muscles rather than just sit up, six pack sit up ab. There's this, there's separation between that and that. Now, any martial artist, any dancer who doesn't have the ability to contract one side and separate is not going to be very good at what they do. So, when we lift weights, I know people, don't, people want it to be very rigid and square and oh, simple. Oh. Yeah, and it can be, and you can still get very far. And if you, that's your passion, for whatever reason, if that's what you want to do, you want to do it. For me, I love biomechanics because it teaches us to be efficient with the body, to get more with what we have. The figure of eight with the ribs, it gives us both of these. It gives us the seesaw action and it gives us the rotation. So we've got rotation we can tap into and we've got seesaw, right? So let's talk about positions. In a clean and a jerk or a clean and a press, there's three positions. There's the floor position where the weight is on the floor. There's the clean position or the racked position where the weight is at the shoulder height on the chest sitting into our body and then there's the jerk position the press position where it's above our head so these positions there are two things we want from them we want security and we want potential so we want security so that we can't recede or we can't lose ground we're trying to gain ground we're trying to get the weight higher and then not lose that or get to a stable position where we have potential which is the other part potential to go further so in any position if i clean it up to here and my shoulders are level Right, I'm pretty secure, but there's still space for me to drop here. So, and if I do that and I don't know that position, I might lose balance. Now, if I'm aware of what the coil is, if I'm aware of coiling, I can sink in, I can rise that shoulder and let the elbow connect to my hip here. And then the weight is on my bones, it's on my skeleton. The more I can take the weight on my skeleton, rather than my muscles, then the more efficient that is for my whole system. Because my heart doesn't have to work so hard to provide oxygen to the muscles to keep them activated and strong. I'm on the bones, which need a lot less, if at all, you know, in the scheme of things to, to take that weight. So if I know the coil and I'm here and I, there's nowhere I can go from here, there's nowhere I can go without collapsing fully. And I'm, I can be on this column here. So not only have I got the lowest checkpoint, which is the first point, I've also got potential because this shoulder's raised right here. What's that giving me potential? Well, if this is a seesaw, I could drop that shoulder. I can 
not only do I get to press with the shoulder and the arm, which I can do like that, I get to use my core, these muscles here, and the weight of the arm to drop, to counter lever to that. And what's the other thing we have? When we go unilateral and we think about it uh, from a more engineering perspective, we also have rotation. So not only can I seesaw, I can rotate. Rotation drives movement. There's a corkscrew. So this almost spinning disc levitation action going off. So So those are two things to think about. So to recap, going from a 1D strength action, like a leg press on a Smith machine, which is a great exercise. I'm not saying disregard those exercises. To a 2D press, like a squat, where you're floating in space and you could go forwards or backwards with the weight. To a 3D, we add another dimension. We had multiple opportunities to be efficient, to use biomechanics intelligently, which can make us feel and actually appear stronger or be stronger we're moving more weight even though we've not actually gained any strength now when we do that obviously you do that over time you're going to get stronger and you're going to get stronger in more functional patterns more functional ranges of motion that use the whole body as one system when i'm on this side and i'm intelligently using this side to counter lever i'm using the whole system which means i'm going i'm starting at an end range and i'm going to an end range I'm not allowing slack. I'm not having to fight myself. I'm not having to squeeze my whole body to keep it level and to stay balanced when I can, why not just go with it, work with the exercise. Again, do both if you're unsure or whatever, whatever you feel, or whatever you're drawn to do. I encourage people to play and have fun with it. But for me, playing and having fun is using my mind in the exercise as well. It's thinking about, hmm, how can I apply physics and my body, use it as a whole system to get the most out of this. It's also where rope flow comes in because this is all about spinal engine and coiling core and weight shifting, learning to use the bones and the body as one system efficiently. This is also why I consider the landmine one of the best exercises you can do in the gym because it allows us to load these unilateral movements and positions. On top of that, it allows us easier balance because we're connected to the ground through this external force. And what's additional to the landmine on top of the kettlebell, it allows us this forward intent for me to drive forwards, I need to engage all of the back chain muscles, which go through and connect through my foot. If my heel's grounded and I only never need to go up and down, well, I'm not fully engaging and recruiting the full system. The landmine allows us to drive in to the bar forwards, which then recruits more of the system, as well as all these unilateral positions and benefits from the spinal engine, the coiling core. So two things to think about, you go in unilateral, you've got seesaw and you've got screwdriver, right? I'll leave it there for now. If you wanna learn more, rope flow is a great place to start or you wanna join my monthly membership, the School of Biomechanics, the link down below. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Tim out.